Chapter 2, Part 1 The Oneness of God Imagine a night such as this night on the Arabian Peninsula. In the clear still air, a man was sitting beneath a cloud of stars so close as to bear down with unimaginable glory. Muhammad was up in the rocky hills searching for the truth about reality. He was searching for a God who could not possibly be contained by the idols that filled the nearby Kaaba, which was the worship center of his other Bedouin tribes. And on that night, on one night, Muhammad discovered that God was searching for him. As he meditated, and without warning, the angel Gabriel brought into the mind of Muhammad words he believed came direct from God. Recite, recite in the name of God. Muhammad was forever changed, and so was the world. The core message that Muhammad would be commanded to recite was simple. God is one, and humans must both serve and worship God. This simple revelation of the oneness of God Allah in Arabic, would be deepened and expanded in the Quran or the Book of Revelations to Muhammad, and it would become the key force in shaping Muslim self-understanding. The possibility of revelation and the shock of what was revealed transformed those who heard it. It forced them to reevaluate everything they knew and see themselves, the natural world, their society, and their future in completely different ways. All the observable diversity of the world would somehow need to be understood in light of the absolute oneness of the Creator from which all creatures came and, as Muhammad taught, to which they would return. Understanding the implications of the oneness of God would lead some Muslim thinkers to embrace philosophical tools, those of the Greeks, to understand and formulate a coherent theology. It would lead others to embrace an atomistic philosophy, not unlike Buddhist metaphysics. It would lead some to a literalist interpretation of the Quran that preserved the unity of revelation, even if it required humans to hold irrational beliefs. And finally, for the mystics, the doctrine of oneness would lead to contemplation of how humans could somehow directly experience through meditation and ritual their own oneness with God, and indeed, all being. But perhaps the most profound influence of the unity of God was social. The oneness of God and of God's revelation speaks strongly to the oneness of humankind, and in particular, the unity that should be found in those who have received the Quran. This community, called in Arabic the Ummah, would always be called toward unity even when it could not realize that unity in daily life. We'll look briefly at the formation of the Ummah in the next video. Thank you.